Hello and welcome back to the Linux Panic YouTube channel. In this video, we're going to be setting up Steam on a Arch Linux desktop environment using KDE. So first, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and give the notification bell a ring so you don't miss out on any future videos. So to get our desktop environment, we're going to be using KDE in this scenario. And we will also be using a couple of install scripts that I've made. So the first things we need to do are go into our pacman.conf file to add more parallel downloads. So to do that, we do vim slash etc slash pacman.conf. As we can see here, I've already changed the parallel downloads to 10. We need to, we need to not do that. We need to do insert, and up to 10, control C, right quit. Now we need to add a new user. So to do that, we do user add hyphen M, which adds the directory. Nick, and it's going to say, hey, look, there's a new one here because I'm just doing something with the earlier one. That's fine. We do password, Nick, to add a password to the user, Nick. I sort of update successfully. This is good. And now we need to go into the sudoers file to add Nick to the sudoers. So what we do is we do vim slash etc slash sudoers. As you can see here, there is no Nick in the in the uh, sudoers group or the wheel group. So what we need to do is we need to do insert Nick all equals all all and all. Control C, right quit, enter, clear this. And now we're ready to install our KDE desktop environment as well as EWM. So we can thank the user, the person Dre, who commented on my how to install Arch on how to install Steam on Arch video. So if you're watching this, thank you very much. I'll uh, make sure to comment on your comment with a link to this video. The first thing we want to do is we want to switch user into Nick. So we do switch user Nick. We're currently in Nick. So what we want to do is we want to get my KDE install script and my Steam install. So Steam install that script, but we'll get Steam install one in a moment. So the first thing we need to do is check to see if it gets installed, which we do. Now we need to do get to clone https colon slash slash github.com slash nmat1 slash KDE slash KDE install. We're going to clone that. Now, if we do ls hyphen la, we can see the KDE install and we want to do cd KDE install. And now we want to do chmod mod plus x KDE install. And I want to do dot slash KDE install and give the password and it's going to ask us for everything all we need to do now is just hit yes all the way through without any hassles and it will just work hit yes and what this is going to do is now going to download 10 things out of time and go flying through now kind of important that well for me it is 10 things at a time because there's 906 separate items to download and as we can see here it's just absolutely flying through as we can see it's 50 well, between 20 and 50 megabytes per second or well, maybe bytes per second so you're more megabytes but that's because uh different file recognition sizes but that's fine so, so far we currently are in four minutes into the video it's not too bad at all it's just checking the package integrity and everything i will show you the uh, install script and what it does once we are actually sat at our kda environment now we just got to wait for this to finish checking the package package integrity. This is is what it is. I'd much, I'd much rather make sure everything's fine first before it does anything more. As we can see now, going through and installing everything should not take too long because again, it's only installing the downloading and the checking to, will will take longer than the installing of everything. Now it's flying through because it's nine hundred and six packages. When it comes to Linux, packages aren't that big. You can get more done with a well, a lot of small packages as well, but still. So we just got to wait for this to finish off. We're currently 600 packages in. Again, another minute since we'll be downloading, so it's not too bad at all, if you ask me. Now we're just going to wait for this to finish going through. And once this is done, it should be done 
shortly because this is also installing KDE applications. Now, if we didn't install KDE applications, we would not be getting any sort of usability out of our terminal. We wouldn't even get the terminal functional. Like, we get no programs, we get nothing at all. As I'll uh, point out in a previous video, I'll leave a card now to my previous video on this just to preach on the subject of why you need to install KDE applications at the same time you're installing the desktop as well. So if you don't, you may as well just take a power, power drill to your hard drive and just drive, drive it straight through. Or your solid state or your NVMe drive, just take a power drill straight through. If you don't install KDE applications at the same time as KDE. Now, of course, you'll get some warnings. Hey, look, oh, look, this might not be right. Yeah, that's fine. And you won't really know unless it chucks some over. Authenticating for org.freedesktop. Yep, that's fine. So now it's asking for authentication. We just give that. Authentication complete. So that's been done. So all we now have to do is reboot. Or we just do. Please work. Oh, so system, CTL, boot. Fine. Listen to the thing. If this to reboot, and we should. He chucks to a KDE desktop. But yes. Give this a minute to think. Now what she's doing is just booting up. Uh, I am running this through Vert Manager, the uh, integrated uh, virtualization software with Linux, which I very much love. And as we can see here, it's a cursor. We don't usually get a cursor with an Arch Linux launch. Now what do we see here? We have KDE desktop environment. It's only taken us six minutes. So, of course, I'm going to give it a password. And then it's going to do the usual uh, KDE, I'm doing something. As we can see here, this may take a little while, but that is fine. Previously, it took me a while, but not in this scenario. Because we will have to wait for it to do its usual spinny, because, of course, this is the first time that we are running KDE. So, we just, we, we'll just have to. Sit and wait. Whilst we're waiting for this to finish, I've also made a Steam install uh, script as well as a DWM script. Uh, I'm looking into maybe getting them put on the AUR just to make it easier. Just like, hey, look, take it. As we can see here, the KDE icon disappeared, which does mean that we are progressing. But don't mind this, this is just the uh, it's just Vert Manager going, hello. That's fine. So now we're just waiting for KDE to be launchable. So I will be attempting to add the install scripts that I have made for Arch variations of Linux. Putting them on the user repository just to make life easier for everyone and make it nicer. As we can see here, we have our KDE. Now, doesn't this look nice? We have all of our applications no problem at all everything that we are expecting is here which is good so what we want to do now i'll open a terminal come on once it decides to catch up i will take console that'll do me Working directory, home next, we want to do. Uh, let's see, go back. And we want to do Steam Arch install, or Steam install Arch, even. It's then going to pull down my uh, repository. Do CD into Steam install Arch. Let's type in LA. And what we want to do here is we want to again give this read write but we'll give this executable permissions so to do that we do chmod i've been doing that all night we've been doing x so chmod plus x steam install arch.sh dot slash steam install arch.sh as we can see here's like hey look please go to slash ed slash pacman.conf and enable multi packages now that's something that i have added in in the uh, script I'll, sh I'll show you that moment in a moment 
So first thing we need to do is we need to do vim slash etc slash pacman.conf. And we need to scroll all the way down. We could have done it whilst we we're in parallel downloads, but I didn't. Just showing it off here. Scroll all the way down. And then as we can see here, we have multi lib. So we want to do insert, get rid of that hash and get rid of that hash. We'll do control C, right quit, exclamation mark. Um, QA. And to do sudo, last command. Let's try not to enter the password wrong. That would help. Scroll down. If you do sudo space question mark uh, exclamation mark exclamation exclamation mark, it does run the previous command with sudo permissions. Of course, you'll have to give it your password, but that's neither here nor there. And now we can do a dot slash steam install dot sh. And as we can see here, it does say please go to slash etc slash pacman dot conf at if and enabled multi packages if you're not done so. And this is just asking for us to get the TTF liberation font. As we can see, it wasn't installed. We say yes all the way through to what applies to you. 75 packages, total of 700 megabytes, I believe it was. Scroll back up and have a quick gander. What was it? 701 megabytes. Barely anything at all by the time I've come back down from having a look. It's already done. It's now just going through, compiling some settings and doing the usual. No bother. And now, all I have to do is just type steam. And there we go. It is as easy as that. I didn't even test this install script before get, before running it by. I didn't test the KDE script and I didn't test the install script because I know how to work this. And I spent enough time writing install scripts for Wine to have picked up a few things. So as we can see here, it's just running through the updates whilst it does that i will show you the contents of the file so we want to do vim slash steam install and as we can see here it's just a, a bash bang with the steam install script update system installs the fonts updates again install steam no bots at all and of course if we do cd let's have an la we can see the kde install so what we want to do is we want to do cd KDE install again vim dot slash KDE install and as we can see here all it's doing is just getting it's just updating your system it's getting xorg plasma plasma wayland session KDE applications remember if you don't get them very bad time uh, enables simple des simple desktop display manager and if you don't have network manager installed network manager installed which you most likely will do it enables it anyway just as a precautionary measure but that's all it is. It saves you hassle. It's just gets it done. As we can see, here, as you saw here, it just worked. Close the window. As we can see here, it's just going through, installing what it needs to. It's no bother at all. And as we can see, it's just going to go through. It's unpacking the runtime. Take barely any time at all. And bearing in mind, this is done in real time. I've not forced it. I've not rushed it. There is no speeding up or slowing down or the footage. It is in real time. That's what I like about using Vert Manager. As we can see here, this is not the Steam login that I'm used to. This must be a new login. But here we go. Steam. It works. It runs as intended. This is wonderful. So I would like to thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and ring the notification bell. If you found this video useful, go share it around the internet to go help other people. Of course, I'll be leaving links to the various repositories in my in the description. So you can then go to them, download them, just run them and have no issues at all. I would like to thank you very much for watching. I have been Nick, you have been amazing, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye.